that you probably have a favorite graphical desktop for DOS. And besides Windows, there are a couple of graphical desktops out there like GOS, Ozone, OpenGem, and we include a couple of those in FreeDOS itself. But did you know there's a text mode desktop too? And that's this week's video. PsychDOS is a desktop environment that runs entirely in text mode. It's meant for launching applications that make it into a full featured desktop. Most of the programs run in text mode too, but a few will flip into graphics mode for extra features like fonts. But otherwise, PsychDOS is a desktop environment that really leverages what it means to be DOS, and that means text mode. So it's meant to be a full desktop, but if you go on their website, the website even mentions that they would have tried to fork FreeDOS probably to make it a more integrated system. But hey, why fix things that aren't broke? So instead, PsychDOS is a desktop system that runs on top of DOS, like FreeDOS. You can also run it in other DOS environments like DOSBox. So the whole thing is open source software. The PsychDOS desktop itself is under the GNU general public license and other components use other open source licenses. So let's take a look. So we can start by looking at a directory. You can see there's just a couple of different programs and then some directories. Uh, the important thing is the runme.bat file. So we'll look at runme.bat and we use that to start the PsychDOS desktop itself. From here, you can actually just use the mouse and you can use the mouse to control the system or the keyboard. But uh, let's take a look at the program menus. You can see the different accessories, the development tools that are there, the education programs, a couple of games, uh, different graphics programs, multimedia programs, uh, different things you can do on the network, and a couple of different things you can do that are sort of office-like, and then some things at the system level. There's also a file manager. We'll look at that later. But let's real quick look at the help. And the help uh, has lots of information about PsychDOS itself. Now, uh, PsychDOS is open source software. It's distributed under the GNU General Public License. And in fact, all the components for PsychDOS are open source software. And you can see the licenses here towards the bottom of the file. And so if you want to get information about each one of those licenses, you can get explanations there. Uh, I'll exit out of that. And let's take a look at some other things in here. Uh, let's look at one of the programs. So if we go under the uh, education tools, we can see the Fox Calc calculator. This is the same sort of basic calculator that we distribute underneath uh, FreeDOS itself. You can just use the mouse to control the calculator, same as you would use under any sort of desktop calculator. And that just lets you calculate really whatever you need to do. Of course, every time you're hitting one of these keys, you are getting some noise. And if you find that uh, annoying, you can turn the sound off using that little uh, music key over here on the right. Here we go. Now we turn off our sound. And you can use FoxCalc to calculate whatever you need to. Kind of a neat little tool. Here I'm just doing a couple of different calculations just to kind of show how you can propagate the calculations. When you're done, just click off, then I'll exit that calculator. Uh, often I would use a calculator to convert units, like when I was in college, I was a physics student. But if you want to convert units, there's actually a program that'll do that. Under education, you can see convert units. And there's an app for that. We'll do this in color mode. So for example, let's skip over the uh, help here. So uh, if you wanted to convert units, let's say length, you've got the ability to do that. So you can go under the conversion index, your index, and then I'm gonna convert from, let's say, oh, let's look at, uh, let's try centimeters. And we wanna convert this to some other measurement. So you can convert to all these different other measurements that are all length ones. But let's do one to inches because centimeters are pretty close to inches. So you can just enter in how many centimeters you have, and let's do 10 centimeters, and that'll be equal to about 3.93 inches. And so that's a pretty easy way to convert. Now you've got lots of different things you can uh, do on the left-hand side. But let's do another one here with length. So we'll go again from uh, centimeters back to inches. And if you remember, uh, 2.54 centimeters is one inch. So if you want to double check that the, the values are correct, uh, that's where it is. So we'll exit that program, but that's kind of a neat little uh, conversion tool.
under the education menu, there's another program. It's a neat crossword helper program. This lets you find solutions to crossword puzzles. And so if you're working on a, uh, on a crossword and you're trying to figure out like a six letter word that starts with a couple letters and ends with a certain letter, uh, this will suggest different uh, words that you might use out of the dictionary. So we're going to start with the six letter word. And you can see you can enter in these different spaces here as I go uh, right then left. And at the beginning, let's start with a, a word that starts with ST and then it ends with an S. So how many words start with ST and end with an S? So you can see here I've got 94 words. And so if I was looking for the word stylus, right, there it is at the bottom of the list. So uh, this is a very handy little tool. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll exit out of that and we'll go back to the main desktop. Now, there's other things you can do with this as well. So I like that it's got different multimedia programs. So under multimedia, we can go to MPX Play and we can uh, play some different music files. And so you start that up and you've got all these different music files that are included for MPX Play. And you can use the scroll bar on the right-hand side and that'll let you view the entire list. And then if I wanted to play a file, let's go back up to the top of the list first. If I wanted to play a file, just click on a music file and that'll start playing it. So we'll click on this one here. Yeah, let's try another one. You can stop that up there with the controls. We'll try Neurosis. That's what that sounds like, so we'll stop that one. And let's try another one. Cabin Fever looks good. And so these are uh, mod files that are stored on the machine itself. So this is included as part of PsychDOS. So we'll go ahead and stop that. We'll play one more. Um, so actually, let's leave that one playing while we go look for the next one. So scroll down a little bit further. Let's, um, let's look for... Let's try this Pac-Man on Wax file. It's got kind of a neat beat. So I said, you can use the controls in the upper right. That'll let you uh, control the music player in terms of stopping it, skipping the next track, whatever you else need to do. And so we'll do Escape to get out of that. Now, I don't have networking set up, but if I go under the network menu, you can see the different programs you can use on the network, including Dillo, which is a standard uh, web browser. We include that on FreeDOS as well. Uh, this doesn't have, as I say, network, and so you're going to get that warning message, and, and that's fine. Just to show off what it does, it's all I need. So it does run you into graphics mode, and you can see on the left-hand side, it's got links to different websites, including the FreeDOS website. So if you want to get more information about FreeDOS, there it is. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you get more information about Dillo and this particular release. And so Dillo is a pretty good uh, graphical web browser. And so if you want to try browsing the web from DOS, Dillo is a pretty good program to try. Let's exit out of this, though. And let's try some graphics. So PsychDOS includes some graphics programs. Let's try the Canvas program. Canvas is an image viewer. It mostly works on PCX files. So you're going to use F1 to go to the menu. You can use the mouse here to move around. And then you're going to use F1 to bring up the menu. And if we go under File and look for the PCX files, we have two different files that we can start with. Uh, one of them is Raptor, and that's just a screenshot from the Raptor game. So if you've played Raptor, uh, there it is. But there's another cute one in here, which is uh, under PCX again. Now, if you want to create simple documents, you can try this FL Writer under Office. So we'll click on that. And that's just a simple text editor, but it has font support. So it's going to run in graphics mode. And so the different menu items up under here. But we can just start a simple document. We'll just type in some sample text. So we'll just say hi there. And this is a line of text. 
and I'm writing this in FL Writer on DOS. So different formatting you can do. So here is some uh, sample text and different types of formatting. So we're going to do this in bold, italics, and underline. You can see the uh, buttons on the toolbar that let you do that. So all you need to do is double click that and then click bold, double click that, click italics, double click that, and click underline. And then down here, we can also enter in some other types of text. So it's got different font support. So you can uh, highlight this and you can just select a different font. So we can try that uh, in a different font if we wanted to. We can put that in serif. And that's, let's try looking at uh, another font here. This is the typewriter font. So I'm going to select that and go to monospace. It's kind of like the typewriter font. But I do have kind of a weird bug here. I, I can't select text and then turn it into a list. I don't I don't see of a way to do that. I, I, it's not doing it for either a bullet list or a numbered list. I'm not quite sure if I'm doing it wrong, if it's just me or what. But even if I select everything and try to uh, turn it into a list, it's nothing. nothing's really happening there. Uh, so you can see it's just, uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. And if you, uh, if you know how to make this work, let me know. Uh, let me try a different way of doing this, though. If I try to select uh, nothing, actually, and just start typing, see, it doesn't even turn it into a list. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing there, even though it's supposed to be as a numbered list right there. So as I say, it's uh, it, for me, the list piece doesn't work, uh, but that's just, a, that's just a bug that I noticed. Okay, let's exit out of that. And if you want to just edit text, just maybe plain text under Office, uh, we can try some other editors. And so you can see a number of editors there, including Vim. So Vim is the standard VI editor from Unix systems, VI Improve. This, if you run a Linux box, this is exactly what you get on Linux. I'll just enter some sample text in here. And if you know your VI commands, I will start inserting text or A will append text. And I hear I'm, I can't speak and type at the same time. And then if you want to go into command mode, you need to uh, hit escape and you can do uh, colon Q and that'll exit the file, exclamation point, I'll quit without saving. And let's take a real quick look at this file manager that I mentioned. So under file manager, this lets you run different operations. So uh, you can see the different uh, drives down here. So I got the D drive loaded and that's my CD-ROM drive. Over here on the right, I've got the, uh, the C drive viewed. Now you can also view certain files. Just click on this and you can uh, uh, use the, the F3 button and that will view the file. So this lets you look at files that are on your system. And it's a great way if you just want to see what files are out there and what are, what's in each file. Great for text files. Some sample files here under look here. This is uh, various information about PsychDOS itself. Let's start with the readme file. And so README has a whole bunch of information about PsychDOS. It's a desktop environment, uses GPL3. And then information about PsychDOS and how to install it. So lots of information. You can see down here it also says it's uh, just a desktop environment uh, for DOS. So it's assuming you are running some sort of a DOS system. This will run on uh, FreeDOS, and that's exactly where I'm running it uh, right here. And a little more information here about PsychDOS. But we can exit using Alt-X or just click on that exit. Now, this is open source software, so we can actually uh, look at the uh, compile instructions as compile.txt. So if you wanted to compile PsychDOS, on your own, uh, you're going to need to use uh, the compiler that they use, but here's instructions for how to compile it. So those of you who are interested in that, you can take a look at compile.txt. But because it's open source software, they do include all of the bugs or these things that they know about uh, in this issues.txt. And so you can just scroll through this here. I'm just clicking on the scroll bar on the right hand side 
to run through the file. And so in here, they also tell you uh, some solutions, some workarounds you might use. And so that's a, a way if you want to avoid some bugs in the system, that's, a, that's kind of a great way to look around that. So anyway, we can exit that. Now, one thing I am confused about, though, is you know this is a pretty good file manager, uh, but there's actually another file manager included in the system. So if you go under here, under accessories, you can see there's File Maven, which is actually another file manager included here. And it's it's a it's a nice file manager. It's very similar to the standard PsychDOS file manager, uh, similar but different. Uh, so if you want to use that, there's another option there as well. Before I go, let me real quick show you this uh, lock screen thing. I think this is kind of cool. So uh, if you're going to be away from your desk, you can actually uh, lock your system. And uh, now I've, I've changed the message before. Uh, so that's the message that, I, that I'm using now. And then I can also set the password. And again, I changed the password already, but let me real quick change it again. Uh, I changed it to the highly secure password. So let's change it to another super secure password. Hi there. So that's our new password. And so now when I lock the screen, so I'll go ahead and do lock now. Uh, now the system is locked and I can go away and do whatever I need to do. Uh, and uh, that's what people are going to see. They're going to see a little message saying that the screen is locked and I'll be right back. Now, if you're visiting uh, this person, you want to leave them a message. You don't have to use a sticky note. You can just write something in this message box. And you just say, hey, do you want to go grab lunch? I'm going to send that message. And so that's kind of a neat thing to uh, to lock your screen with, and then to unlock it, just put your password down there. There we go. Now, now that I'm back at the desktop, I can actually look at the messages that are waiting for me, and I can do that with this little arrow button up here. And you can see there's a message that was left for me. Don't want to grab lunch. So I, now I know that somebody is looking to get good lunch with uh, with me. And that's a about it for the overview of PsychDOS. Uh, it's a really cool system. Uh, to create this text mode desktop system. Totally done as a TUI or a text user interface. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Before I go, thank you for supporting me on Patreon. Your support really does make this channel happen. Some of you are supporting me at a higher level and I want to thank you especially here. So thank you very much for that. Visit our website at freedas.org. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.